We're going to talk about circles, and to start out, we need to learn about distance. The way we're going to do that, we're going to plot these two points, and then figure out the distance between them, or how far apart they are. I'm not going to use graph paper, because most likely you're not using it either. Uh, and I want my notes to look uh, very similar to your notes. So I'm going to plot 1, 3, 1 to the right, and the x, 3 up. There's one point, and the other one's at negative 3. 1 and 4, so left 3, up 4. And it's a little tricky to label because I'm about to draw on top. So I'll draw the line segment that we want to measure right here. I could draw that a little better. All right, we want to know how long is this green line. I can tell it's pretty close to length of four, but not quite because it doesn't quite go horizontal. And what I'm going to do is redraw what is here, except just draw it bigger. So here's that diagonal line, two points. And I'm going to draw the vertical and the horizontal like this. Now we'll call that Y and that X. There's two points here. I'll call the point on the left P1, which was negative 3, 4. And the other one I'll call P2, which is 1, 3. Now I'm going to give the coordinates. I'm going to call the specific 1, 3. I'm going to call that X1. Oh, I should have called it X2, Y2, because I called that P2 x2, y2, and then point 0.1, the negative 3, 4, I'm going to call that x2, comma, y2. All right. So let's think about the y side, the vertical side. Just looking at the picture, if I draw this vertical side, it's right there. The horizontal side goes like that. How tall is that vertical side? You should be able to, just looking at it, figure out how tall it is. And of course, you can use those numbers right there. So the y is going to be length 1. I'm going to separate these two. Uh, now the x, the horizontal, we're looking here. How long is that line? Don't look at the 3. Uh, that's, that's the y coordinate. Uh, but if you look, we go from negative 3 to positive 1. So between those, the length will be 4. So x will equal 4. And I want to know the length of the green side, the diagonal side. I'm going to call it h for hypotenuse. And how do we figure out h? We're going to use the Pythagorean theorem. We've created a right triangle. So we have h squared equals x squared plus y squared. Now, I'm going to be a little bit, uh, well, we'll solve for h. So we'll take a square root of both sides. So this will be the distance right here. Notice this is always going to be a positive number because we are squaring whatever the x is and whatever the y is. And that forces them to be positive. Uh, and then we take a square root of a positive number. It's always going to be positive. What I'm going to do now is use the x1, y1, x2, y2 uh, instead of just x and y. So we'll look back here. We, we, did the, we did the y's first, but I'll look at the x's now. So I just want to think about those two x values. And you always want to think a big minus small, or another way is end minus start. Uh, Usually we would take the big one uh, minus the small one to get a positive number. Uh, however, we're going to square these. So if we change the order, uh, when we subtract, it would just be negative, And that won't matter because, again, we're about to square them. So our x, another way to think about x, you could write as x2 minus x1. We're going to see what's the difference between these. And that's going to go in here for x. The y's are really similar. 
you're going to just do y2 minus y1. That'll get the difference in the y's. And again, if you're worried that uh, uh, one of these or both of them might be negative, uh, just remember we're about to square them. So them being negative is no big deal because they're about to be forced uh, positive. And this is the distance formula right here. So we're gonna actually plug in our values just to make sure that it all comes out to uh, one and four. Okay, so we had, oh my goodness, look at that. That should be a subscript of one. It should be an x1 comma y1. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna just rewrite x1, y1. That was negative three, four. And for the x2, y2, that was one, three. Okay, so we're gonna plug these in now. x2 is one minus, so that's x2, that's x1, so it's minus a negative three. We need to use an extra parentheses here. Now for the y's, we have y2 minus y1, so that's gonna be three minus four. Okay. Uh, and yes, minus a negative is a plus, so we got one plus three squared, plus three minus four is negative one squared. So here is where you see that we have a negative, uh, but the next thing we're gonna do is square these, and so one plus three is four, squared is 16. Uh, actually, I'll, just I'll leave it as four squared for a second. Uh, so we get four squared plus is the same as positive one squared. And if you look, that's the same four and one, the same sides that we got using geometry right there earlier. So it is gonna be the right distance. Four squared is 16, one squared is one, 16 plus one is 17. And that is our distance. Uh, when you're entering this uh, on one of your homeworks, uh, you can do SQRT of 17, you can also do 17, there's a caret button on the regular keyboard, it's shift six, uh, and you can either do 0.5 or one half. Uh, so if you do 0.5, it'd be like that. Now if you do one half, you have to force order of operations, you wanna make sure you do the one divided by two before you use it as an exponent. So you would need to wrap it in parentheses like that. All of these are okay. And again, this is how we're gonna write it, but in order to type it, you're gonna to have to use one of those two. You'll find when you type SQRT parentheses that it actually turns into a square root symbol. Okay, so that's our first distance right there. Now we're gonna look at what is a circle, which I need to write down the formula first. Uh, circle, we need to state the with a center. We're going to use HK for the center. Uh, if you were in 111 before, you'll notice that those are horizontal and vertical uh, shift letters that we use right there. Uh, and it's going to, uh, so very similar here, so it's going to shift the center H to the right and K up. Uh, and of course, we need a radius for a circle. All right, now your radius uh, shouldn't be zero, and it definitely needs to be positive, so your radius does need to be greater than zero. So a circle with center HK and radius R has the equation It's X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. And this is basically the distance formula one step above, where if you just take the square root and s squared both sides, that's the formula you're looking at. 
Okay, so that's our circle equation. This is really important. So again, the important things I'm putting inside of a box. We had our distance formula in a box earlier. Now we have our circle, circle formula in a box. And we're ready to use this on the next problem. Write an equation of a circle centered at negative 4, 7, passing through 17, negative 13. The very first thing I'm going to do is rewrite the circle equation. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to not make any mistakes writing this down, uh, and I want to plug in values afterwards. So now I'm ready to plug in some values. So center is negative 4, 7, so you want to be careful. H is negative 4, K is positive 7. So X minus negative 4 is really X plus 4. plus uh, y minus 7 squared equals, we don't know the radius yet, so I'm just going to leave it as r squared. So we've taken care of this right here, the center. What we have not used is this. So I'm going to use this point to figure out the radius. One way to figure that out is to apply the distance formula and figure out how far apart is the center from any point on the circle. And you can use those in the distance formula. Now if you look, this is basically the distance formula right here. And it already has negative uh, 4, 7, and so, uh, yeah, it already has negative 4, 7 in for uh, x and y. It would be x1, y1 is the position it's in. Let me uncircle these. Okay. So let's go ahead and plug in 17, negative 13. All right, we can add these now. 17 and 4 is 21. Plus negative 13 minus 7 is negative 20. All right, from here. Uh, there's not much you can do. Uh, you could square these numbers. Again, I'm writing it as uh, positive 20 because we're going to square it, so that negative is going to disappear. Uh, we haven't written the equation of a circle yet, so we're about to do that. And what we're going to do, we now know what r squared is, so we're going to use this version here and we're just going to replace the r squared with 21 squared plus 20 squared. And again, this is basically the equation of a circle. The only difference is I did not yet have a radius value, which we just figured out, and we're about to apply that. You can definitely take this and square both of them, add them together, and you will get some value, I don't know, something like 800, 900, something like that. Totally okay to do that. You can also just leave it like this. I could have left it with the square root squared, but that square root square is gonna cancel out. And it's a very good time to talk about what will not cancel. So this is gonna be called the freshman's dream. So freshman's dream uh, is a to c plus b to the c is never going to, well, it'll equal if c is 1, uh, but it's not very exciting when your power is 1, uh, but it will not equal uh, a plus b uh, to the c power. So you can't just take your power and distribute it. You will not get this. Uh, you can see this happen even when just... Uh, C is easy value like 2. Uh, we know how to deal with uh, 
squares, if you have a plus b squared, you do I'll have to foil this out. You have a squared plus b squared plus, now you have the outside inside, ab plus ba, which is another ab. So this is the extra term you get, or extra two terms. They do combine to the, uh, turn into one term, but it's not just a squared plus b squared. The reason I'm writing all this out is because what I don't want you to do, if you had, for example, uh, x squared plus y squared square root, this will never cancel out to just x plus y, even though you do have a square and a square root, but what messes it up is you're doing addition. And exponents work like multiplication, they don't work like addition. And so addition and exponents do not play well together.